recorded. I have to yeah. say that for legal purposes. So yes, I understand it's being recorded, and I did my agreement. Okay. Okay, Peter. Um, first of all, how are you doing? Not an easy time. Yeah, it's. Uh, we went from uh, uh, all our struggles to get to see my father in his care home, uh, and only to find out that he was dying to. Uh, struggling to get my mother out of her care home where a lot of people were dying. So uh, it's just, she's in hospital now. She seems, she has COVID-19, but she seems to be in good shape. She's recovering and we're hoping to get her out of there soon. So it's just been kind of like out of the frying pan into the fire back into the frying pan. So I haven't had a lot of time to to absorb the, the grief about my, my father's death. It kind of hits you when you're least expecting it. Sometimes the smallest thing can trigger it. And, um, so the short answer is that I haven't had a lot of time to grieve, grieve for my father and, and neither have any of my, my brothers, my brother or my three sisters. And, and such, such a horrible way to have to deal with the, the loss of a parent. You, you want to be able to be together. There's comfort in being part of a group and being with your family. So I know you've said that the realization hasn't hit you yet, but are you able to connect with family members in some way? We uh, we do it on a regular basis through Messenger, uh, Facebook Messenger. We have these family conference calls. Uh, we have a constant uh, email message chain going, and then every once in a while we do a, a joint conference call, whoever is able to make it, and we discuss whatever it is that we want to discuss that day, and usually, you know, obviously serious stuff, passing on communications about what's going on with my mother. But sometimes we just all go crazy silly and start laughing at the most childish things or laughing uncontrollably. I think that's part of our grief too. Um, but, you know, a lot of exchanges about our father. We're, at one point we were posting the string of uh, photos from things that reminded us about our father, like the wood panel station wagon that we had when we were kids and old cold, cold, old port cigarillos and the kind of sale pipe tobacco we used to smoke and his old spice deodorant and those were all like heavy triggers for all of us and you know, bring back fond memories of uh, our, you know, our fond association with our, with our father as we were growing up. You, you were, I guess, one of the lucky ones in that you were able to say goodbye to your dad. You were there with him. Hugely lucky. Uh, we appreciate that so much because we'd been fighting for two weeks. Uh, when he moved from the Heron residence to the LaSalle residence, the, they weren't able to install a phone in, in his room because technicians couldn't get into the building. So we were completely cut off from my father for two weeks. We weren't even sure he understood why he had been moved. We thought maybe he was sitting there for two weeks thinking he had been deserted by his family. Uh, so we were fighting for two weeks just to get in there. And when we finally got our foot in the door, that's when we found out he was, he was dying. So uh, just... The Quebec has a compassion and exception for the quarantine, and and so we were allowed to have family members come in and see him. And you know, we also had to weigh the risks for ourselves in going to see him. So uh, myself, my brother, and my my middle sister uh, all decided that you know we we're in reasonable health, so there wasn't a big risk if we if we contracted COVID. There wasn't a big risk to our, our health. So uh, uh, you know that's. It's hugely important to have those luck for me and for my sister and for my brother. It was hugely important to have those last moments with my father, a chance to say the things that uh, you want to make sure don't go unsaid. Um, so we're very privileged that way, I think. Do you think your dad knew that you were there? Or? He definitely knew we were there. He couldn't talk towards the end, but just the movements of his eyes and, and just the, the reaction when you said things, you knew he was hearing what you were saying. Uh, he couldn't vocalize it, but the movements of his eyes told me that he, he heard. And that, that uh, at one point, I was uh, I'd brought in a Bluetooth speaker and I was playing some of them, my, fa my father's favorite music from when we were kids, uh, Barbra Streisand and and uh, Anne Marie. And Anne Marie was playing when two of the orderlies came in to change my father's position in the bed. And when they came out, one of them was smiling. She says, "That's the happiest I've seen your father in weeks. Uh, he's really enjoying the music." So. That's a nice thought to hold, yeah, isn't it? In in broader terms, in large terms, how do you think this pandemic is changing the way families mourn and grieve the loss of people they love? 
I think we're, we're going to want to get back to the old ways as quickly as possible once once uh, COVID is over. Um, I, uh, I understand, like, there is, within some religious, uh, some religions, some religious beliefs, it's important to uh, to commemorate the passing of someone who's died as quickly as possible, within 24 or 72 or 78 hours, whatever. Um, I think that's a little bit less important in other, uh, my, like my parents were, were very Catholic. Um, so... You know, there's, uh, but there's not a huge rush to have a, a funeral service for my father. He was cremated. He's sitting in the, the uh, he's, he's uh, you know, he's going to put it, I forget what you call it, the monument or whatever, where you, where you place the urn. So uh, he's in his final resting place. Eventually, we're going to uh, memorialize uh, my father. And we're going to have a, a service and we're going to have a commemoration of my father. And I keep telling people, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's no best before date on grief. Uh, that if we celebrate my father's life in two months, six months, or even a year, uh, for me, I think it's going to have just as much value, maybe even more so, because, uh, you know, we will have experienced the crying, we will have gone through the toughest parts of grief, and we will have gotten to the, our core memories uh, of uh, what a great man he was. And we will share those observations with other people who will share their observations of my father as well with us and I think it's going to be a very cathartic experience and um, you know I, I'm not in a rush to do that I just want to make sure it's done well and my father I think would be the first person to say to get angry if people were putting their lives in danger just to go to a funeral for him he would say wait there's no rush do it when everyone is safe and you can all hug each other in person rather than virtual hu virtual hugs over the net Oh boy, that'll have to do for now. You know, virtual hugs over the net. You you, you do the best you can under the circumstances. Yeah. Peter, uh, you've spoken so eloquently. I, I want to thank you very much for sharing this very personal experience with us. Thank you. If I speak eloquently, it's my father's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stop the recording. <laughs> it's good that you...